Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. We've got a series of atmospheric river events that's gonna be pummeling the west coast over the next week or two, bringing some heavier rains inland, as well as heavier snows, and even bringing the snow line a little bit further south as well. So let's start off and take a look out here at the Pacific and look at the steady stream of moisture out here on the latest water vapor transport index. That is an intense amount of moisture out there off into the Pacific. That is going to be pummeling the West Coast into California where we've got one and even stronger ones already building back behind it. And even, even heading into the next week, we have yet another one. And then another one actually trails behind this one. So all this moisture is going to be impacting the coast of California up here in the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to be increasing the precipitation inland as well and increasing the snow amounts and rain a little bit further south. So let's take a look at the setup. As far as these overall sea surface temperature anomalies, it's all complements as the La Nina is finally losing its grip out here. You can see the difference in sea surface temperatures just over the last seven days. And these above average temperatures are increasing on a daily basis, eating away of that La Nina and adding impacts to that subtropical jet. And that's gonna be able to activate. And that because of that, that brings a steady stream of moisture to our Southern branch as well. That will bring increased amounts of precipitation heading inland as well. And we have to be looking out for some flooding concerns as stalled frontal boundaries. So here's the setup from the North to the South. It's all about the atmospheric river to the north is bringing a steady stream of precipitation. We do have some cold air, can, cold Canadian air locked up into the northern side, as well as a southern jet stream is activated. And that's a Pacific, more of a zonal flow. And that's a little bit of a warmer flow, but it's also has a boundary here with this low pressure center. It's gonna be stalled over portions of Texas and Oklahoma, getting into the Missouri Valley, basically the Arklatex region, into portions of Louisiana. Those areas have to be on high alert for some, some heavier rains, if not some flooding rains over the next couple of days. And to the north, we've got a bona fide snowstorm really starting to take shape. The difference with this one, guys, is it's actually pushing more south than what it is north with every update. So that's a big change, and we are seeing changes in the overall pattern. I think we'll actually continue to see those changes as long as the La Nina starts to finally start to lose its grip, and we're transforming into more of an Enzo neutral type setup. So going forward, take a look at the overall hazard map index. This is for today. There's newly warned uh, flood watches out here with complements of that atmospheric river event back into California with heavier rains and heavier snows in the mountain regions. You've seen this almost all winter long piling up the snow amounts. We're almost up to record territory up here in the mountain regions. Uh, and even southern portions of Oregon is going to get in the action with some of that heavier snows. But there's the setup going forward with that steady stream of moisture up here, uh, portions of the northern plains. That gets into the upper Midwest, and this will actually fishtail a little bit further south this time. So I think places into northern portions of Illinois and Indiana and Ohio actually is going to be getting into the snow action as this continues to verse across. And we even have a bigger setup heading into early part of next week. So if you are in the market for a weather station, I highly recommend the Tempest Weatherflow weather station. I know a lot of people have taken advantage of it on this channel and received one and starting to like the benefits from it because it's all solar and it has a really convenient app and it does, gosh, just a little bit of everything out there. I think it's the best weather station on the market. I do have a discount code that gives you 10% off and free shipping at checkout if you'd like to order one and purchase one for yourself i'll have the link in the description below so you can actually order one for yourself so let's take a look at the setup for today because we have to be concerned about that stalled frontal boundary and it's a compounding setup so basically areas just north of the North Dallas area will be inundated with those training rains, especially into portions of Eastern Oklahoma, get it into the Arklatex region and portions of Western Tennessee. Those are the favorite areas for some heavier rains 
not only later later tonight into tomorrow but even increased amounts as we go into tomorrow as that same just pesky stalled frontal boundary will just slowly be draped across these areas and we got a sharp temperature gradient where it's essentially 70s to the south and we've got 50s and 40s uh, to the north but there's that atmospheric river event especially as we head into tomorrow and it can get serious i mean i'm <laughs> i know the california has been inundated with a lot of heavy rain as of late and they're going to be compounding this and this is just what's to start over a series of again it looks like to be another series of atmospheric river events so for tomorrow we've got a moderate risk for excessive rainfall in these areas into northern california uh, creeping back into portions of central california so flooding is going to be a huge concern on thursday but yet even on friday so it's a compounding setup with back-to-back -back days in some areas have moderate risk for excessive rainfall you know with that type situation you're probably going to be seeing some flooding on top of the snow melt the snow melt's going to be prevalent especially for areas that are lower than 4,000 feet and elevation you're going to see a lot of snow melt so you got a lot of runoff with the higher snow levels and the heavier rain that spells trouble and that's why they've got those flash flood watches in place as flooding is going to be a huge concern in then this region so but to the north it's all about the snow so there's that conveyor belt of moisture and this is the latest update from the HRRR guidance high resolution guidance it only goes out 48 hours but the trend is your friend guys it, and so instead of areas that I think still Minneapolis is going to get hit, but the difference is this is, has been trending a little bit further south as with every update. So areas and places like uh, Iowa is going to begin impacted with some heavier snows, northern sides of Illinois, northern sides of Indiana, uh, northern sides of Ohio too, where a lot of you guys are probably throwing in the towel on winter. It's not quite over yet, guys. Hang on tight because I know it's March, but we've got changes in the atmosphere and I do feel more snow opportunities are going to be on the table for a lot of these places that have been asking like where's all the snow <laughs> well hang tight because we got some snow flying in your area but it's going to be a compounding event and i think heading into early next week i think more of these areas into illinois and the ohio valley are going to be getting impacted from some snow so here's the latest nam update now this one goes out actually you know four days 84 hours so yes it includes two more days of activity with this with this uh, snow line and again it's just kind of conveyor belt of moisture and it's cold enough to snow so all this is going to be in the form of snow up here into these regions as this will be traversing across from west to east but the difference is again with that kink in the hose and the colder push of air coming in from canada that puts the snow line a little bit further south, a little bit further south in these areas of upstate New York, getting into Pennsylvania. I think this will eventually creep into northern portions of Jersey. And we're trying to make it the guy, we're trying to make it into New York City. I'm not gonna roll out on Saturday. You could be surprised in New York City from this particular event as cold air will continue to drain down in these in these areas, especially along the coastal regions. Here's the latest uh, European guidance, kind of implies the same thing. And it, it leaning towards the GFS was on this first of the Southern track and more guidance is trailing following that GFS Southern track. So it's pushing the snow line again, just a little bit further, further to the South why the Sierra Nevadas just gets adding to those record totals that they're probably getting very close to seeing already. And we still got more snow on the table for them but headed into this weekend we have another bona fide low pressure center we're going to start to see this i mean with these areas are kind of used to being in a long-term drier spells and drought because they've been in a la nina for so long the game's changing guys it's over now i mean it's we're locked into more of an enzo neutral now we're going to be seeing more opportunities like this pop up and this is what's going to happen especially as we get deeper into spring so the things start to light up in these areas across portions of oklahoma and to north texas with another bona fide area of low pressure center now these areas have been in the warm sector all week because they're not going to get that cold canadian air that puts the instability into play it increases the 
the, uh, the, the instability in these areas, and it could actually be in the form of some severe storms lining up on your Saturday and into your Sunday time frame. It doesn't look like a big event, but it still looks to be enough instability in the air that some of these could turn severe with some damaging winds and some smaller hail and some some quarter size hail at times turning these into severe thunderstorms so these are just areas of concern as that uh, within that low pressure center especially a little bit further south where that severe weather could be in these areas of oklahoma and parts of north texas getting into arkansas and that pushes across and good part of the southeast heading into your day on Sunday, traversing that area of low pressure as that starts heading up towards the Ohio Valley and eventually the Northeast as cold air continues to press. So here's the latest update as of Sunday morning. So here's the low pressure coming out of Oklahoma, going into Arkansas. There's you have to be concerned about some higher instability, some of that severe storms on your uh, Sunday afternoon. But further to the north, look at the 540 line, how low it drops and it drops into central Illinois, portions of maybe southern Illinois, you will start to get into the snow action. That's kind of rare, right? If you haven't seen much snow in those areas so far this season. I mean, Indiana, these areas will traverse across and lift across the uh, the Ohio Valley, getting into the deeper end of the afternoon on Sunday afternoon. So they're gonna be dealing with some stronger storms further south and to the north. It's all about the snow as a bona fide 999 millibar low pressure starts to tighten up and start the deeper it gets, the more intense the snow levels are gonna be in these regions as it traverses across a good part of Ohio with a good coating of snow. And that ends up offshore off the Northeast coast down to a 991 millibar. A lot of ensembles are on this as well from the from the GFS and as well as the European. They've been on this for like the last couple of days here. So yeah, we even got some wraparound action here too. There's the 540 line dipping all the way down into Tennessee, right? We've got a pretty good chunk of high pressure here, 1035 Arctic high pressure. That'll be locked over to these region as the main push. And that's the difference of the, the change as we'll start to have a warmer flow, really kind of more of an impact Texas, while most of the colder push of air will be really be locked over to uh, the Ohio Valley into portions of uh, you know, say Kentucky into the into portions you know, portions of the southeast, especially into the Mid Atlantic, into the Northeast. It really won't impact further south, and especially into Texas, and especially into the deserts southwest, where I think I think you'd be on the predominantly a little bit warmer side uh, from this flow of colder air, because that's exactly what the Climate Prediction Center has. It has that buckle that the the, uh, the southern jet stream too much put too much for these areas for the cold air to win as the cold air pushes elongating over central and then pushes eastbound and that's why i feel these areas will have the colder air locked in place and as that low pressure center will come up then that will combine with that colder air dragging that snow line a little bit further south of what you've been used to so far this winter so don't be surprised if areas in these areas go heading into Monday and Tuesday end up with some snow because exactly, you know, the domino effect of what's going to happen with the compounding of the colder push and that low pressure starting up further south because of the jet stream, far, far, you, know, tr you know, coming in further south. Yes, that puts the snow line further south in these areas as well. So yeah there's the setup potentially by monday night heading into tuesday morning and early next week we've got a pretty good low pressure center off the coast so some of these areas along the i-95 corridor could be surprised with some even some snow moderate even maybe some heavier snows at time as that low pressure center just kind of hangs out and it just wraps around with that cold arctic dome building on the back side as that colder flow from the northwest flow pushes in by the middle of March, as a, as that colder air continues to drain in, so there's the setup on the on the pressure patterns. That 1035 Arctic high pressure builds in from the north. At the same time, you got a low pressure wrapping around, pulling in the precipitation. So the compounding effect as a bona fide snowstorm potentially over the northeast 
heading into that Monday and Tuesday time frame. And it's cold enough. By the time we head into Tuesday morning, there's that colder push. So I know you guys have probably been antsy about planting your plants down here, but hey, we still have a freeze that's potentially gonna be on the table by early next week even further south in some of these areas across the southeast, northern portions of Mississippi and Alabama, even into Georgia, could have some light freezes in this area. It's gonna be cold enough. So yes, while that low pressure centers over these areas, those are the low temperatures. So it's gonna be plenty cold. Whatever precipitation that falls within this area is, is gonna be in the form of snow. It won't be rain this time. <laughs> and that's that's a big difference as uh, what we've seen a, a, a lot of the winter. So, but yeah, there's the setup on on, uh, on Tuesday. The latest European and the and the GFS is kind of on board this, the same way with that low pressure center just kind of hanging off the coast here, wrapping around, pulling in those those tightening isobars, the tightening area low pressure. This one's down to a 982. At the same time, we've got yet that other atmospheric river event that's going to be pummeling the West Coast again, right? Oregon, Washington, uh, Northern California, heading back into Central California. They'll be adding to those rainfall totals. And I think it just deepens into the middle part of next week because yet we have another series of, of atmospheric river come back this one's going to be impacting southern california this won't be until the middle of the month march 15th but look at this one guys trailing behind this one so we've got two or three impacting this week and we've got another two or three impacting next week and by the end of next week could this one could be the one that really brings the flooding because the compounding effect of all the rain that's happening this week and then the snow that's going to be you know melting you know all throughout the week that's that's not that's a nasty setup you know by the end of next week as this one could be the really the one that impacts a lot of the areas that has a compounding effect with the snow melt and the heavier saturated soils by then to really start having a, de a, a, a serious flood threat for, for California. So here's the setup over the next seven to eight days. We got plenty of rain. I mean, there's just plenty of rain, copious amounts of rain out here and off, off the coast here. You look at the map here, at, at least six to eight inches along these coastal regions. This is just over the next seven to 10 days. You've got plenty of precipitation coming. So flooding is going to be a huge concern in those areas. And here's the setup across the middle of the country where that just pesky stalled frontal boundary has just been hanging out all week long. And along that boundary, you're going to get some rain. I mean, and then Saturday, you have the, the, the severe stuff and you've got Sunday, the severe stuff. And then the stuff that comes in next week with another area of low pressure center that comes along that area. So here's the latest, uh, you know, this is the uh, ensembles of the GFS and the guidance has been a little bit further south with every with every update. So that's been the trend is instead of instead of every update has been pulling north, every update's actually pulling south. And that's a big significant change of what we've seen really all winter long as things are changing as that change or th you know things are changing out there in the out in the Pacific and it puts the alignment uh, once they get, once these storm systems come inland, it just puts the alignment in areas that have has seen less precipitation will see more precipitation and less snow will be actually seeing more snow going forward. So I right, guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.